Welcome to all. Today's topic is cell injury that we discuss in general pathology in second year of dentistry. So what is cell injury? It is defined as a variety of stresses a cell encounter as a result of changes either in its internal or external environment. The cellular response to stresses may vary and depend upon the following parameter. First, the type of the cell and the tissue involved. Second, the type of cell injury. Third, the extent of cell injury. Various form of cellular responses to cellular injury may follow. The first one is the cellular adaptation. When there is a increase in the functional demand, a cell may tend to adapt to the changes which are expressed morphologically. For example, either the atrophy that is reduced in the size and the number of cell, for example due to the loss of the endocrinal stimulation or arteriosclerosis. The second is the hypertrophy that is the increase in the size and the number of cell either due to physiological condition like in case of pregnancy there is enlargement of uterus and pathological conditions like pyloric stenosis in stomach. Second response is reversible cell injury. When the stress is mild to moderate, the reversible cell injury takes place and the cell tends to revert back to its normal form and normal form size function. But if it prolongs for a longer period of time, it results in irreversible cell injury that can occur at two places. The first one is at the subcellular level that is known as subcellular changes and second the changes that occur within the cell that is known as the intracellular accumulation. Now the, in this chart we are going to study the sum up of whole chapter that we are going to discuss. First of all normal cell hai, usse stress mila, usne adapt karne ki koshish ki. Adaptation हुआ. अगर वो adapt नहीं कर पा रहा stress को, तो cell injury cause होगी. अब cell injury अगर mild to moderate है, तो वो reverse back होके normal position, form, function में आने की कोशिश करेगा, जिसे हम कहेंगे कि reversible injury थी, और normally वो revert back होगे अपने normal function में. लेकिन, अगर कोई cell injury बहुत severe है, तो वो जाएगा irreversible cell injury में, जिसमें cell ultimately death पे चला जाएगा, और death के उसके two procedures है, the first one is necrosis, and the second one is apoptosis, now the next topic is etiology of cell injury, it basically classified to two types, the first one is the genetic cause, the second is the acquired cause, genetic cause, as a name suggests, it is genetically, yani ki by birth causes. For example, developmental defects, that is error in morphogenesis. Second, cytogenic defect, that is chromosomal abnormalities. Third, the single gene defect, that is Mendelian dis dis disorders. Next is multifactorial inheritance disorders. And the second category of causes is acquired causes, that include hypoxia and ischemia, Physical agents, chemical agents, microbial agents, immunological agents, nutritional rearrangements, aging, hydrogenic and so on which will be discussed in detail. Now the first is acquired causes and the most common causes of hypoxia. It is defined as deficiency of oxygen causing cell injury by reducing the aerobic oxidation to the cell which result in hypoxia, for example in high altitude conditions and in anemia. The second one is the ischemia, which is loss of blood supply from impeded arterial flow or reduced venous drainage, for example in case of ambulus or in case of cardiac failure. The third agent is physical agent that include mechanical trauma, Thermal trauma like heat, cold, electricity, radiation like UV radiation and rapid changes in atmospheric pressure. Next, another acquired cause is chemicals and drugs. Chemical poisons like arsenic poisoning, mercury poisoning, cyanide poisoning, etc. Environmental pollutants, strong acid and alkalis, insecticides and pesticides, social agents like alcohol and narcotic agents and drugs. 
Microbial agents include the infection caused by microbes like bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, etc. Immunological agents that include hypersensitivity reactions and anaphylactic reactions. Nutritional derangements include those conditions that occur due to the loss of nutrition like in case of anemia, marasmus, starvation, etc. Next acquired causes aging. Cell aging lead to the impaired ability to not to repair and replicate and lead to the cell death. Psychogenic causes include the problem that occur due to the drug, alcoholism, smoking and that can result in liver damage, lung cancer, peptic ulcer, etc. Next causes iatrogenic causes that may occur due to the wrong judgment done by the physician and that can lead to the unwanted effects of drug and medicine and radiation. Idiopathic disease or idiopathic cause that is the unknown cause. For example, till death we don't know the cause of a cancer. We don't know the cause of the hypertension that occur to most of the people. Now the topic is cell injury and death. Basically, cell injury is classified into two types. One is the reversible cell injury. Second is irreversible cell injury. Reversible cell injury is that injury which occur for a short period of time and in this the effect may be on the rapid restoration of the circulation that result in case of a myocardial circulation or myocardial contractibility. In this there is a cell swelling which occur in the cell which is capable of fluid iron hemostasis due to the reduced function and generation of ATP dependent pumps. The second condition for example the fatty changes that occur due to the accumulation of the lipid vacuoles in the cytoplasm. The second type of injury is irreversible injury that is uncommon under the category of necrosis. In case of an irreversible injury it basically takes two procedures. One is the denaturation of the protein that is breakdown of the protein particles into smaller pieces. Second is the enzymatic digestion of cellular components. Now the most important part is pathogenesis of irreversible cell injury. If hypoxia or ischemia is too prolonged, there is no point of irreversibility, no point of return is there, then what will happen? The first one is a reduction in the generation of ATP, depletion in the pH of the cell, depletion in the production of the protein and leakage of the lysosomal enzyme within the cell cytoplasm. As you can see in this chart, जब हमारा decrease हो गया ATP का generation, तो सबसे पहले होता है influx of calcium into the mitochondria. जब excessive of calcium mitochondria में आएगा, तो mitochondria generation of ATP कर ही नहीं पाएगा, तो सबसे पहले damage होगा हमारा mitochondrial की function, जिसे हम कहते हैं mitochondrial damage. इस डैमेज की वजह से दो एंजाइम्स एक्टिव हो जाएंगे पहला फास्फोलाइपेज एक्टिवेशन और दूसरा प्रोटीएज एक्टिवेशन फास्फोलाइपेज एक्टिवेशन की वजह से जो हमारी सेल मेम्ब्रेन है या प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन जिसे हम कहते हैं उसमें फास्फोलिपिड से बनी हुई है फास्फोलिपिड के सिंथेसिस रुक जाती है और जो बचे हुए फास्फोलिपिड मेम्ब्रेन में होते हैं उनका कंटीन्यूअस लॉस होने लगता है दूसरी तरफ लिपिड की ब्रेकडाउन होने लगती है और सेकेंड एंजाइम जब एक्टिवेट होता है दैट इज प्रोटीएज एक्टिवेशन उससे क्या होता है जो साइटोस्केलेटल इंजरी होती है हमारी मेम्ब्रेन को बाउंड रखने के लिए या एंकरेज जो रखते हैं वो ये सेल मेम्ब्रेन के थ्रू रखते हैं बट ये साइटोस्केलेटल इंजरी हो जाती है और ये सारा मिला के रिलीज करती है लाइजोसोमल एंजाइम्स उसके अलावा जो टॉक्सिक ऑक्सीजन फ्री रेडिकल्स होते हैं वो रिजल्ट करते हैं लिपिड पर ऑक्सीडेशन एंड डीएनए डैमेज लिपिड पर ऑक्सीडेशन का मतलब होता है द लिपिड बेस्ड सेलुलर प्रोडक्ट्स आर ब्रेक डाउन इन टू द स्मॉलर पार्ट दैट दैट कैन ऑल्सो लीड टू द रिलीज ऑफ लाइजोजोमल एंजाइम एंड रिजल्ट इन सेल डेथ तो दिस इज द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट दैट इज द पैथोजेनेसिस ऑफ ए रिवर्जिबल सेल इंजरी Now the next type of cell injury is free radical mediated injury also known as ischemia reperfusion injury depending upon the duration of the ischemia the restoration of the blood flow may result in three consequences 
first reversible injury that we have talked about second is irreversible injury just we have talked about few seconds back and the third one is the reperfusion injury what is reperfusion injury that we are going to discuss right now under the mechanism of reperfusion injury and the free radical mediated injury is very complex and it basically has three components pehla कैल्शियम ओवरलोड सेम कैल्शियम का इन्फ्लक्स होगा माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया में और जनरेशन नहीं हो पाएगी एटीपी की सेकेंड जनरेशन ऑफ द रिएक्टिव ऑक्सीजन रेडिकल्स दैट इज सुपर ऑक्साइड हाइड्रोजन पर ऑक्साइड एंड दैट कैन लीड टू दी सब्सिक्वेंट इन्फ्लामेटरी रिएक्शन सो मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट इज वॉट इज द मेकेनिज्म ऑफ ऑक्सीजन फ्री रेडिकल जनरेशन बेसिकली इट इंक्लूड थ्री इंटरमीडिएट मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ पार्शियली रिड्यूस पीसेज ऑफ ऑक्सीजन विच आर जनरेटेड डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स दैट हैज बीन ट्रांसफर्ड द फर्स्ट वन इज द सुपर ऑक्साइड ऑक्सीजन दैट रिलीज वन इलेक्ट्रॉन सेकेंड इज हाइड्रोजन पर ऑक्साइड दैट रिलीज टू इलेक्ट्रॉन थर्ड इज द हाइड्रोक्सिल रेडिकल दैट रिलीज थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन एज यू कैन सी इन दिस चार्ट यहाँ पे ऑक्सीजन है that is converted into superoxide radical due to the auto oxidation of oxygen jo ki hota hai mitochondrial electron transport radical mein further jab superoxide radical hua usne convert kiya hydrogen peroxide mein because of the enzymes jo present hote hain mitochondria mein hydrogen peroxide jo hai that is reduced in water and catalyze in the peroxisomes later on the hydrogen peroxide converted into the hydroxyl radical ion by two processes the first one is the radiolysis of the water and second by reaction with the ferrous ions which is known as fantoin reaction the last important topic of this chapter is antioxidants what are antioxidants these are the endogenous and the exogenous substances which inactivate the free radicals these substances may include vitamin a vitamin e vitamin c serum proteins that is celluloplasmin and transferrin and self hydryl containing compounds like cystin and glutathione i think you have understood all the lecture very well i hope you understand it and then if you have any query or want me to organize your study personally do the email which is showing me on your screen Thanks for watching